there, fellow gamers. I'm thrilled to have you back. If you were to ask a Japanese gamer which JRPG series is the greatest, they'd probably say Dragon Quest. If you asked a Western Nintendo or PlayStation fan which JRPG is the best, they'd probably say Final Fantasy. But what if you asked a Sega fan? Yes, it would likely be Fantasy Star. I'm sorry to say this, but the Sega fan has it right. Why? Because I say so. <laughs> In this episode, I'll explain why. Fantasy Star was released in Japan in December of 1987. What's interesting? It was released the same weekend as Final Fantasy for the Famicom. Just a year earlier, Dragon Quest was released for the Famicom and it was a huge success. Sega's previous consoles SG-1000 and the Mark II underperformed. The Mark III would be introduced to the market, and Sega knew they needed a killer app. After the release of Dragon Quest, there was a hunger for RPGs in Japan. As a result, this project became a role-playing game. Renowned programmer Yuji Naka had been inspired by a Japanese pop song called Nagaisa no Fantasy, which means beachside fantasy. After playing around with the word fantasy, it was decided the game would be called Fantasy Star and take place across four planets. The heads of Sega gave the development staff the freedom to make the game they wanted without restrictions. With the decision to make Fantasy Star a 4 meg cartridge, it would feature animated environments, animated creatures, and 3D dungeons. Sadly, one of the planets had to be cut due to memory restrictions. As a result, the game takes place on three planets, Palma, Moltavia, and Azorith. You play as Elise Landau, one of gaming's first heroines. Your journey begins with the death of your brother, struck down by the evil King Lassic. Fantasy Star has medieval elements, but takes place in a distant future. Along with its 3D dungeons, specialized vehicles help separate it from the competition. Initially, the 3D dungeons proved to be difficult to develop. The game designers struggled to convey maps and traps to programmers. Yuji Naka created a program that would generate wireframe dungeons in 3D specifically for the game designers. Fantasy Star's 3D dungeons ran faster and smoother than anything like it up until that point. Sound and music was handled by Tukuhiko Uwabu, who went under the handle bow. You might know him for the soundtracks he made for Alex Kidd in Miracle World, Fantasy Zone, and Space Harrier. In Japan, the Mark III had the option of an FM sound add-on, which improved the music. The Japanese Master System actually had the FM add-on built in. Fantasy Star took complete advantage of this upgrade, making a great soundtrack even better. It's a shame Sega didn't bring this add-on to Western markets. I would have been all over it like a fly on stuff. You don't need me to tell you what an incredible game Fantasy Star is. History has done that for me. However, the game isn't perfect. Literally, you start the game off grinding for 300 meseta to buy a passport and mew. This could take two hours or more. Initially, dungeons aren't too difficult, but they progressively become more and more complicated. Later, dungeons are near impossible. As a kid, this wasn't an issue. We'd spend the next year playing this game. Nowadays, I don't think most gamers would invest the time. Thankfully, Sega released the Sega Ages version for the Nintendo Switch. The new Ages mode adds visual maps for the dungeons. Enemy encounters get twice the XP and double the resources, while encounters happen less frequently. The Switch version defaults with the FM sound. Pausing the game brings up additional guides that help with items, spells, and armor. If you'd like to try this game for the first time, 
or you wish to revisit the game, I recommend the Switch version. It's by far the best way to enjoy this game. That's it for now. We'll see you next episode.